many years ago, I think it was about seven years ago, we did a project in Connecticut where we used open graded stone base and bedding layer and then a sand fill joint. A couple years after that, a gentleman named Phil Baylor, he's right next door, he's the purveyor of Pave Tool Innovators, wrote an article about that project and coined the term hybrid installation or hybrid bases, open graded stone, open graded bedding, and then a sand fill joint. So what we're going to do, because we get a lot of questions about it, is do a little test to see how strong or how well the bearing ability of this open graded stone alternative will work. Now we're going to use this little fish tank, this little aquarium here, as a demo. This is our excavated area. So if we're doing a hybrid installation, Rick, and this is our soil subgrade down here, what would we do to prepare that subgrade in a hybrid installation? Hybrid installation, we will want to make sure that we amended the soil. So we need to classify, amend it, and compact it. Okay, that's what we would do, because we want runoff, right? We want it to run to the lowest grade point. So our first step would be to install a geotextile fabric. You want to explain that to them? Yep. We're using a woven geotextile fabric that's going to have some biaxial strength and prevent some migration of that soil as well. Actually, the word is bilateral strength. So when it's tensioned, hold the corners, when it's tensioned in two directions, it can bridge minor differential settlement. Let go of it now. Let go. <laughs> so this is a woven geotextile. It has an AOS of 70 to 100. It has a grab tensile strength of 110 pounds, and its minimum weight is 4 ounces. So we're going to put that over our compacted subgrade. Now, it is not extending up the sides of the excavation because this would be the worst demo in world's history if we did that. You wouldn't be able to see anything. So use your imagination. It would extend up the sides of the excavation. So now we're going to use open graded stone base. Something different, right? Yeah, we're using recycled concrete here. This is 2B stone 57 that's recycled, washed, and screened. Okay. So this is, there's some stone in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, because there's stone and concrete. But mostly crushed concrete. Now I see a bit of a tile. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I see a little bit of a brick. Is that a problem? No, it's not. Okay. Let's check the bearing ability. Are you ready? Let's check the bearing ability of this material. No matter how much weight we could stand on this. Obviously it is compacted, dumped out of the bucket. It was compacted in the bucket. It is in here. We are done. Okay. What if we wanted to increase the strength of this? Let's say we have a big Prevost motor coach or a tractor trailer that we're driving. Kind of heavy vehicular traffic. We yeah. can use a biaxial geogrid like this. And this works by stabilizing the aggregate. There's holes or apertures in here that the aggregate goes through, and that gives strength. You never want to cross or overlap geogrid because it changes the size of those holes, doesn't allow aggregate to go through, and you don't get the strength. Okay, let's back up one second. In a true retaining wall, what kind of geogrid do we use? True retaining wall, holding back soil. Uniaxial, strength in one direction. Why do we do it? It's less expensive and we only need strength in one direction. Now, biaxial geogrid means strength in two direction. Here's a quiz question. You ready? Does that mean the same strength in both directions? Not necessarily. That's absolutely correct. So if you're buying biaxial grid and your assumption is same strength in both direction, you can't tell by looking at that that it is. Now, this one is, but you have to make sure that you read the technical data about it. Okay? So let's put that in here, Rick, and never, never, never overlap it. Just set it down. I got it. Okay. I feel like I'm doing most of the lifting. Get some. Okay, so we have three inches of stone down. We're going to put three more inches of stone down, right? What, 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 what? Wait a minute. Here's a piece of wood. So that's a biodegradable. We want to get that out. We don't want that in there. More tile, a couple of pieces of brick. Any problems so far? No. Want to check the bearing ability? Yeah, let's check it again. No movement at all. You can no. displace the stone a little bit on top, but you're not going to get that when your pavers are installed. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. This is the worst demo I've ever seen. <laughs> I promise you it gets better. So now we've got to put in our bedding layer, right? No, not quite yet. What are we going to do? We're going to put in a non-woven geotextile fabric over top of that because we're worried about something they call choke. There's some bigger voids inside here. When we put our setting bed in, which is a number eight, that can void and migrate down into this area. So this will prevent any migration of that aggregate. Okay, so 
If we don't use the fabric, let's talk about that. If we don't use the fabric and we set our pavers at the threshold height, how much will they settle over time? How much will the bedding layer migrate into the base? Who knows the choke rate, the math on that? Yeah, I don't know it either, honestly. So that's why I use the fabric. Because then wherever I set my pavers, 50 or 100 years from now, that's where they'll be. Okay, so what's my bedding layer going to be, Rick? We're going to use number eight. This is a crushed stone, not a recycled material. So this is a 3 8 inch chip. How much are we using? One inch. One inch. Now, the industry says to use two inches. We're saying one inch. Why? Well, because we have one inch screed rails in our trailer, first of all, why have to go out and buy all new screed rails? And number two, we're putting that layer of fabric in there, so we're not going to get any choke at all. Bearing ability check? Yep. A little bit of movement, right? Tiny, tiny bit. Just rearranging particles, but really no change. What we're doing with our hands is basically a deflectometer test. We're putting it under pressure of our palm. And now we can start laying our pavers. You want to go down and show them the paver, please? Yeah. We're using a Travertina raw paver by Teco Block. This product does everything. Walkways, driveways, sealed in line. De-icing salt resistant, lifetime transferable warranty. Does everything. Interlocking, permeable, rock salt resistant. You can plow it. You can snow blow it. You want travertine texture that can withstand our environment? This is it, period, that's all. Now we're gonna put this to a test, Rick. Let's put some, put some weight on those pavers. Get you right here. There's no movement, right? But we're gonna make it tougher. We're gonna put a pitcher of water in it. We're gonna see how the lubricating effect of water will change the bearing ability of this stone. Will potentially weaken it, right? Water's the lubricant. That Give me that pitcher. What? Dump the whole thing in there. What? How about a five-gallon bucket of water? How about we submerge the entire system in water? Where are we going to put the water to, Rick? We're going to go all the way to the bottom of the paver. We're fully going to saturate the base and the setting bed. All the way to the bottom of the paving stone. Imagine if this was your Crusher Run or your CR6 or your 21A or your 2A Modified. 2A Modified. All right, looks good right there. That's five gallons of water. You ready? Let's test the bearing ability of this material. Zero movement. If this were densely graded stone, what would you have? Soup. That's what you would have, soup. That's the benefit of hybrid installation. Everybody give Rick Bischoff a round of applause, please. Whenever you're using recycled concrete, make sure you check the shape, hardness, gradation. If there's contaminants like wood, get them out. Brick and tile, we're not worried about. The homeowner was concerned with the environment, so this is one of those selling features that we gave to her, that we're using recycled material on her project. That's right, and the cost is one-third as expensive. So if we can save them money and save the environment, I'm in. We got this material from Lehigh Valley, but if you don't have it locally, ask somebody who crushes concrete. They're doing it all over the place. It's screened if they can wash, wash it concrete. or if they can screen it. Yeah. Now, trust but verify. That's Ronald Reagan. Okay? So do I trust that quarry to give me the right shape, hardness, and gradation? No. I check it. We independently lab tested the material, and we had them sign off on it. Period. Otherwise, we will not use it.